Well, happy Wednesday coming Community Church. Pastor Thomas here. Hope that you are hanging in there uh, with uh, the winter uh, doldrums and hanging in there. I know a lot. we have a lot of folks who are uh, struggling right now with health issues and sickness and the virus and everything else. So, uh, no, I'm praying for you guys. Um, and you pray for one another. You may not feel like you can do a whole lot right now, but... Um, it doesn't take a whole lot just to simply say, Lord, be with our folks who are sick today. Amen. Um, and just lift up uh, our needs within the body. So to that end, if you're able to join us today at one or two o'clock, rather, excuse me, for prayer meeting, would love to have you. And then also uh, don't forget about our discipleship groups. Would love to see you uh, in one of those. If you have not joined one, let me know. We'd love to get you plugged in to one of those. Um one other big announcement uh, is that this Sunday, uh, February the 7th, we will meet virtually again. We will only live stream. Uh, we will not uh, meet in person. Uh, we've got uh, just a lot of folks who are uh, either sick or recovering. And uh, just based on timelines and such like that, we want to make sure that folks aren't uh, uh, contagious and, and making other people sick to that end. So I uh, just pray that you would uh, be patient with us on that. Lord willing, on the 14th of February, we'll get back together. Uh, so um, if you have any questions on that, please let me know. Um, no Adult Bible Fellowship as well uh, this Sunday. So there we go. I think that's all that in the way of announcements. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, a great chapter from chapter or from for, uh, First Chronicles. It's chapter twenty-one, um, where we see two beautiful aspects of the gospel uh, that we can talk about today. So uh, the beauty is that all of the Old Testament points forward to the cross, and uh, we we see the goodness of Jesus there. So let me pray for us, and then we'll dive in. Gracious God Almighty, I thank you so much for today, for your goodness and your kindness. I pray that you would uh, just bless this church, provide healing for so many of us who are sick or battling cancers or dealing with grief. Father, I pray that you would just remind us of the hope that we have in Jesus. Um, we ask that you'd be with us now and that you would guide and strengthen us and that you would send your spirit as we send and study your word here. And it's in the name of Jesus, we ask these things for his glory. Amen. Well, in chapter 21, verse 1, we see the setting already laid out here in 1 Chronicles. And the very first thing we see is that Satan stood against Israel and incited David to number Israel. So David went ahead and, and called his commanders together and said, let's, let's do that. And his commanders said, but aren't the people gods? Why are we counting them? And David says, do it my way. Well, verse 7 says that God was displeased with this thing that David had done, and he struck Israel. God judged Israel for its sins. And David, of course, quickly repented, and, and I think that's been the beauty of it, is the, the first aspect of the gospel that we see here, uh, is that there is forgiveness. Because of the second thing we're going to talk about in a moment, but uh, there is forgiveness. In 1 John, it tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I'm grateful for that wonderful, wonderful truth. Um, so that that is a tremendous uh, promise there. And, and God does. He does forgive, but there are still consequences. Uh, there is still a price that must be paid. And it's in here that we see the second beautiful aspect of the gospel. So God sent a pestilence that ended up in ki killing 70,000 people in Israel. And when David saw this, he, he put on sackcloth, fell upon his face along with other elders of the, of the nation. And he said, was it not I, this is verse 17, was it not I who gave command to number the people? Is it, it is I who have sinned and done great evil, but these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand, O Lord of God, be against me and, my, and against my father's house, but do not let the plague be on your people. And here we see David stepping in and being the intercessor. He is the 
the uh, shadow of Jesus. And now we'll see it even more so in the next thing we talk about. But we see David interceding for his people. And what a blessing we know that Jesus is our high priest, it tells us in Scripture, that, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he is making intercession for us even today. And what a tremendous blessing that is. Well, then uh, David was told that he should uh, go to the site of the threshing floor and build an altar. Um, and so that's what David did. In verse 26, David built an altar there uh, to the Lord and presented burnt offerings and peace offerings and called on the Lord. And the Lord answered him with fire from heaven upon the altar of burnt offering. Then the Lord commanded the angel and he put back his put his sword back into its sheath. You see, David stepped in and made a sacrifice. He made a sacrifice um, on behalf of his sins uh, to uh, atone so that the nation would be spared. And in our case, Jesus is our sacrifice. He is the one who uh, stepped in and uh, died so that we would not have to. He who was without sin became sin for us. What a tremendous blessing that is that, uh, that we see him stepping in uh, and, and paying that price. What a blessing that Jesus is our substitutionary atonement. What, a, what a, an incredible thought. So in that whole story about how David rebelled, accounted the people, and God dealt with him and they processed that sin, we see a picture of the gospel. And that com we see that because we've, we train our eyes and our hearts and our ears to know the gospel and to see it throughout the whole counsel of Scripture, even in the Old Testament, because it is there also. So here's my challenge. Not only do we need to know the gospel and take advantage of forgiveness and be that people, but my challenge for each one of us today is this, is to read the Old Testament with gospel lenses to see the good news of Jesus, whether it's a, a type, a shadow, uh, whatever it might be, all for his glory in the days to come. Amen. Well, I hope that this finds you well. Uh, we will see you online on Sunday and uh, keep praying for one another. And we trust that God is going to do amazing things. Have a great, great, great rest of your week, everybody. God bless.